It is Thanksgiving in Brooklyn. We are here at the Barclays Center with a big time college basketball showdown between Penny Hardaway and his Memphis Tigers facing Kevin Keats and the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, especially Wolfpack Nation. And welcome to Barclays Center Classic, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. With Fran Fraschilla, I am Doug Sherman. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Fran. Likewise. Memphis, as we know, is missing two of its prized freshmen for the time being, Lester Quinones and James Wiseman. They still have talent. They do. Yeah, they're, they're, they're missing those guys. They'll be back in mid-January, one NCAA eligibility issue, the other one an injury. Lester was working out here with his left hand earlier today. But don't worry about Penny Hardaway's club because they have a plethora of NBA potential, including Precious Achua, DJ Jeffries. They have stepped up not only over the last game, over the last three combining for nearly 40 points a game. Meanwhile, Kevin Keats has a reliable senior. He's been with him five years, both in Wilmington and now in Raleigh and C.J. Bryce. Consistency. That's what you get from C.J. Bryce. Solid power guard can play around the basket. Great in the mid range. Great senior leader. Should be fun. Wolfpack in their reds. Tigers in their whites. And it will be the native New Yorker, Precious Achua, jumping center against Manny Bates, a redshirt freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And it's the Wolfpack out of the ACC with the basketball first. And what you will see from NC State is a lot of pick and roll involving the man with the ball now, Markel Johnson. Young man who missed the first game Ooh. of the season. Manny Bates! He is an impactful young man, 6'11", out of Jack Britt High School, and the sky is the limit for him. Absolutely. Shoulder injury last year, did not play. Elite shot blocker. Boogie. Boogie Ellis, freshman from San Diego with his first two. One thing you'll love about this game is these teams love to get up and down, pressure defensively, and they will play fast offensively. Memphis is 14th in the nation in scoring. NC State is 24th. The lob. Oh, Once again, pretty. Manny Bates yeah. up around the rim. Really pretty. Nice dime by Bryce. And Manny Bates off to a nice start. Well, NC State has a terrific backcourt. Markel Johnson, Braxton Beverly, C.J. Bryce. Off the turnover here is Braxton Beverly. Third year starter, junior from Hazard, Kentucky. And we know what he can do, and that is shoot the deep ball. And this is Bryce, who as mentioned, followed Kevin Keats, sat out a transfer red shirt year two years ago. He's what I would call a power wing. Trying to split the double team. NC State fortunate to keep the basketball. Helms off the window. It's six to two. Wolfpack. All the way to the bucket is Damian Ball. You're going to like him, Doug. He puts pressure on the ball. He puts pressure on your defense with the way he attacks. Had a chance to see this team in the Bahamas in August and uh, it's a little bit of a stretch, but he kind of reminds me of Gary Payton. Big point guard, strong to the rim, good defender. Chance to be a great defender. We saw a power point guard last night, didn't we? We sure did. Isaac Likely out of Oklahoma State. 26 points, eight assists, five rebounds. Yeah, Fran and I fortunate enough to spend our Thanksgiving week with our fabulous crew here in Brooklyn. Couple of games last night in the NIT season tip-off. The uh, third place and championship games tomorrow. With the contact absorbed, able to lay it in is Helms for his second bucket. Very aggressive start for the Wolfpack, attacking the basket. As expected, both these teams getting up and down, both able to fill it up. Memphis now a perfect three for three off the triple by Ellis. This is important. Boogie Ellis has not gotten off to a great start yet, but he's got a load of talent. Here's the pressure. Achua knocks it away. There was contact, but no call. Wolfpack get it back. Deflected out of bounds by Boogie Ellis. 
And the Wolfpack will keep it under the direction of third-year head coach Kevin Keats. Did a terrific job at UNC Wilmington, assistant coach at Louisville for Rick Pitino. Before that, a tremendous high school coach at Hargrave Military Academy. And if you're a Wolfpack fan, you got to be excited about this guy being your head coach for the foreseeable future. Class, terrific recruiter. He's got a great class coming in. Done a great job in his first two years. And Fran, you know, the one thing that he really learned at Hargrave that benefits him in this day and age in college basketball is roster management. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, the, the number one job description of a college coach right now is roster management supervisor. <laughs> Between transfers, grad transfers, freshmen, JUCOs, transfer portals. Helms, pass inside, and it gets away from Manny Bates. And here comes your 6'9", 225-pound power forward, fouled by Helms in the front court. Well, Penny Hardaway, of course, the greatest Memphis Tiger ever at his alma mater in year number two. He's a, uh, a gentleman who had a fabulous playing career, but he's more than just an ex-player. He's a really good coach. Well, he, he did a great job of, of transitioning from ex-player, businessman, into the coaching ranks, AAU first, obviously in high school and now at Memphis. And the one thing that I noticed about his team in August when I watched them in person was these kids play really, really hard. As talented as they are, they really, really uh, put the pedal to the metal on both ends. Ball with a dangerous pass that found its way back out to Boogie Ellis. He drives on Beverly. Leak out. Here comes Markel Johnson. The senior from Cleveland has his first two. He is the key to, to NC State. As a sophomore, brilliant passer, last year scored more, playing on about an ankle that's about 85%, but one of the best point guards in the ACC. Yeah, he missed the season opener because of that ankle. Offensive foul. The coach told us before the game that uh, Markel's still a little hesitant. And you can understand that when you land on somebody else's foot and roll it as badly as he did, it takes time to get over that. Exactly, especially because you're using your speed and quickness to, uh, to uh, be on the attack all the time. Full court pressure by Memphis. Beverly still with the dribble on the pick and roll finds the big man going to the bucket. DJ Funderburk though missed the shot and here comes Memphis the other way. Ellis baseline hanging in the air for two. That this is a great sign for Memphis and one of the byproducts of Quinones and Wiseman being out is these other young players need to step up over the next month and this is a good sign for Boogie Ellis. One more lob to the rim this time Funderburk able to put it in. DJ Funderburk, a starter, well, actually off the bench last year, but a key guy, and he missed much of the preseason because he was suspended by the team. He's back now. And then missed a couple of games in the regular season, and the Wolfpack still not 100%. And we have a Malcolm Dandridge sighting. Malcolm Dandridge, big kid for Memphis, was going to redshirt this year. But number 23 is in the lineup today. He played for uh, Penny at Memphis East. Funderburk for three. Five points off the bench for the 6'10 redshirt junior and Ohio State transfer. And that takes us to break. 15 to 9, Wolfpack off to an early six point lead over the Tigers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Basketball Hall of Fame, where the game never ends. Who am I? I am a senior guard from NC State Wolfpack. Some things you might not know about me is I love baseball, I don't eat anything out of the water, and I don't eat Thanksgiving food. Who am I? I'm Markel Johnson. So when they had their traditional Thanksgiving dinner last night at Delmonico's, what did he eat if he didn't have the turkey? If you go to Delmonico's, you're probably getting steak anyway. Hey, Markel, you get on that plane, you go back to Raleigh, bro, because Doug Sherman and I, we're going to the Marriott Brooklyn Bridge. We're getting some turkey. So we would have invited you, 
But if you're not into Thanksgiving food, you go back to Raleigh and get that Delmonico steak. Hey, that's all right. Young man out of East Tech High School, Cleveland, Ohio. And Coach yes. Keats was saying, you know, as a sophomore, he led the ACC in assists. Last year, he shot 42% from three. He wants for this year for Markel to put it all together. He does. And this is a kid not highly recruited, backed up Dennis Smith Jr. as a freshman. And didn't just back him up, but in practice had to go against him every exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. No, he, he's one of the best. Uh, to me, he's one of the three or four best point guards in the ACC. Cole Anthony, Trey Jones, maybe Trent Forrest, Kihei Clark. Couple of opportunities at the rim for Memphis. How about a third time? How about a fourth? Finally, Lance Thomas able to put it through. You know, the Louisville transfer, I didn't even know he went to Louisville. I had never heard of him. <laughs> but when I watched him in the Bahamas. I love his energy. And if you watch him, he's always talking on defense. He is a communicator. Well, he played so few minutes for Louisville two years ago and then sat out last year. This is really the start of his college basketball career in many ways. Traveling violation, Devin Daniels. And given Wiseman's, you know, departure for at least a month, love this kid's energy. And, and it gets back to what we said earlier as NC State goes to a little four core press. This is a golden opportunity for this Memphis team to grow up without James Wiseman and Lester Canones and then have them for the second half of the season. Watch out. Boogie Ellis. Yep. I'm going to give you a guy he reminds me of, Lou Williams of the okay. L.A. Clippers. Instant offense. This is the best he's played early in his career, in my opinion. Here comes Boogie Ellis again, already with nine points, fouled by Braxton Beverly. Brand, you mentioned Boogie Ellis still trying to find his way, averaging only eight points per game, but so far here tonight, he has been very proactive. He's very dynamic athletically. Uh, he's got that NBA kind of game, which is why scouts are intrigued with him long term. And uh, I'm thinking the Lou Williams type, uh, Monte, uh, the uh, Miles, Monte Ellis, who played at uh, with the Golden State Warriors many years, kind of an instant offense kind of guy. And he's a gym rat too. He works at it very, very hard. Here is Alex Lomax. One of only three returning Tigers who played minutes last year for Penny Hardaway. Takes a shot across the bow and will shoot two. Lomax, another one of the players out of Memphis East where he played for Penny Hardaway back in high school. Yeah, but he's coming off his best game of his career last Saturday in that one point win over Ole Miss. 14.7 rebounds, seven assists. He's a he's a blue collar point guard, a team leader, not a dynamic athlete. But uh, runs your club, and he certainly knows Penny Hardaway's system, having been with him going back to their Memphis East days. Well, according to Ken Palm, this is the youngest team in the country. And uh, actually, perhaps a little bit older in terms of the way the minutes are dispersed without Quinones and, and Wiseman out there. But still, very young. Some folks would like to say, well, could they be the Fab Five? Are they that good? Do they have the opportunity? Turnover thrown out of bounds by Pat Andre. Does this Memphis team win whole? Do they have the ability to make a deep run in March? I think they can get to the Sweet 16. And, and to be honest, I don't think freshmen can win a national title. But I will put a caveat on that. The country has no great team this season. There are no dominant upperclassmen teams. And so a team like Memphis, I think, can make a, a Sweet 16 at least run. The talent is here. The question is, how quickly do you grow up over the course of your first season, especially when a lot of these guys naturally would have one foot out the door mm -hmm. to the NBA? So if that's what they could be in February and March, what are they now without those two guys? Are they the they're, 16th best team in the country no, right now? No, they're a first weekend team. They're, to me, they're in the top 35. That's where they are. They're a first week. This is like an 8-9 game we're watching at the moment. Corner triple, Tyler Harris. You know Darren Sproles? Yeah. NFL, this kid's like Darren Sproles. He's a third down back. Tyler Harris can really put points on the board quickly. And like Sproles, not the biggest guy, 5'9", 150, and Penny wants for him to use that to his advantage. Wild shot by Funderburg. All Memphis lately on a 9-0 run, looking to stretch the lead. Ellis, foul 
fouled by Johnson. Good energy by Memphis. Good ball movement as well. Fourth team foul will send Ellis to the line to shoot three. This young man from San Diego, he committed to Duke last fall. And then when Trey Jones in early May about elected to come back for a sophomore year, Boogie asked out of his letter of intent. He wanted to go somewhere, someplace he could play right away, and uh, he had already visited Memphis, and the connection was already there. Check out the Battle for Atlantis bracket. Michigan with a statement win over North Carolina today. Congratulations to the Wolverines, and then it brings me to think, Fran, once again, if not Cole Anthony, who had another big game, who else for the Tar Heels? That's the key question. You know, they, they've got size up front, uh, but they're not really a scoring team. It, it's, uh, it's, a bit, it's a big key question, but how about Juwan Howard and the job he's done? Theoretically, no coaching experience. There's Lance Thomas. I'm telling you, get used to this guy providing quality minutes off the bench. He's, this is what he does. He plays hard with energy, and he gives you that rim protection. And he's getting that opportunity without Wiseman. Off the fake, Johnson kicks it to the wing. Helms attacks again, and it's tipped up and in to snap the 12-0 Memphis run. And we have an injured North Carolina State player. Jericho Helms back to his feet. It looked like Jericho might have might have hit his head and he mm. did. Oh, he took a hard spill, but he's okay. Now think about think about Juwan Howard and Penny Hardaway. These guys have made millions of dollars. Yep. Patrick Ewing's in that same mix. These guys could be living on a Caribbean island somewhere. Look at this. The lob yep. and the finish. Sweet. Energy. These kids play hard. And Alex Slomax rock solid. Fun to Burke earns a trip to the line off the foul by Thomas. He will shoot two when we return to Brooklyn. Tigers on the attack, both ends of the floor. Here comes Lomax. Lance Thomas throwing it down. Memphis, North Carolina State early here in Brooklyn. Tigers up by six. Fran Priscilla, the big story for college basketball this month has been the James Wiseman saga that began, well, years ago, really, when Penny Hardaway, then a, Hardaway, then a booster, gave a gift of $11,500, unbeknownst to James, to James's mother, to move the family to Memphis, and now it has led to what is a 12-game suspension. Yeah, and listen, there's a lot to criticize the NCAA for. Maybe the rules are arcane. Rules are what they are. Memphis defied the NCAA. They're going to pay a price. They already are. In my mind, they ought to give, they ought to add a 12-game suspension for both Penny Hardaway and James Wiseman. Just divide it up. You want to keep Penny out six games and not coach, and James plays six and sits six? Fine with me. At some point, come on, you've, you've got to penalize the adult and not the young man. Young man theoretically probably didn't know what was going on. Right. And I'll say this. We knew when Penny, when James Wiseman moved to Memphis East, it's pretty much the final nail in the coffin for Tubby Smith. Everybody who follows basketball knew that Penny, this guy who is a legend in that city, a city that loves its Memphis Tigers, when James Wiseman moved to Memphis East, we all knew he was going to be the next coach at Memphis. So you can't say, well, he was his high school coach and it was only breaking Tennessee State high school rules. I feel bad for the young man because he is a phenomenal kid and he's going to be the number one or two pick. I think at some point you got to suspend the coach sometime. Okay? He's the adult. Lomax goes down, out of bounds. No foul call. They say what Funderburg did was legal. But to finish up with, with Wiseman, do you think, I mean, your idea, I love the idea of, of splitting up the 12 games and, yeah. and even allow... The University of Memphis make the decision to decide play James all 12 sit penny 12 But is that just pie in the sky could that ever happen you think Fran? Well, here's what I will tell you 
at some point over the next 24 months, these coaches involved with these level one violations must be suspended for a long time. Now, in this case, I don't think Penny deserves a long suspension, but certainly I think it would have been fair for the coach to be suspended. And I don't know where the AD and the president were on this. They've got a new AD who's got enough issues because he's going to be replacing a football coach soon because Mike Norvell's done a great job. I wouldn't have started out this way, seemingly letting my coach make a decision to play the young man. So Memphis is without Wiseman until January 12th when they play South Florida. Can this group, will this group, keep the Tigers above water so that when yes. he returns, they'll be able to hopefully fulfill what has been expected of them this year? Yes, this young group that's playing over the next six weeks will grow. When Wiseman and Canones come back, they're going to be very dangerous. I still think they're going to struggle on the road at times in the American Conference because of their youth. But there is a lot of talent here to do major damage in a really good basketball league this season. So Wiseman's not here in Brooklyn, not allowed to travel with the suspension, but you saw Lester Quinones, who you were watching during pregame. Working out with his left hand with assistant coach Cody Topper. And uh, there you see Lester's right hand. Cody Topper was an assistant with the Phoenix Suns last year. And Devin Booker, their outstanding young star, went through the same exact injury. And so Lester had the, did the, the, uh, the Booker workout today, the Devin Booker workout with Cody Topper. Well, Quinones is out three weeks after breaking a couple of bones in his right hand early in Saturday's win over Ole Miss. So this is kind of an unhappy return to New York. He is a Long Island guy from Brentwood, New York, and was hoping to be able to play not far from where he grew up, but uh, glad he's able to make the trip and yes. be in uniform, be part of it. Tremendous young player, best shooter on this team. Jaden Hardaway, the son of the coach, was not given room to come down safely, so a foul is called against the Wolfpack. Jaden, a 6'5 redshirt freshman who sat out last year for his father, and dad says, I'm his biggest critic, said his son has a high basketball IQ and, and that he'll be a great four-year player for us at Memphis. I like it. I like this kid. He's been quiet so far, Precious Achua, but he's got an elite motor to go along with elite athleticism. And we haven't seen it yet. Bump before the shot on the penetration. Take a look right here. He does most of his work to the rim. This is a nice move right here. Under control, spins, turn around. Can really, he, he, on a, one of the assistant coaches, Tony Madlock, told me before the game on a bad day he's going to get you 14 and 10 but the three games that he's played without James Wiseman he's been 20 and 10 got a hand on the rebound and there's that motor and keeps it now he attacks there it trying is. to throw it down but he was fouled my goodness he is the epitome take a look just watch the effort he makes right here and you're talking about six foot nine and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a backhanded compliment and he won't understand this but in the NBA they call a guy like this underskilled but high energy you could talk about guys like Clint Capella who play really hard this kid's not a great shooter yet he's proven that but he has an elite NBA athlete likely a lottery pick and he's one of those small ball modern foremen mm -hmm. that's gonna get on the glass can rip and run in the open court and he's going to play both ends of the floor. Right. He takes pride in his defense. Yes, he does. He's a, to me, he's a more athletic version of a Kenneth Fareed. And Kenneth Fareed has enjoyed a long and successful NBA career. Made a ton of money. Hardaway misses a pie off the glass. Wolfpack with it. 26-23. Memphis up three. Just past the midpoint of the first half here in Brooklyn. Markel Johnson step back to nothing but net. He, he is really good in pick and roll. He has not shot the ball well this year, but last year over 40% from three. Corner three and wearing his dad's old number. Hardaway's on the board. And here comes that pressure now. Both teams, when they make field goals, they usually bring the heat. C.J. Bryce. Oh, 
Pick and roll coming. This is Markel's game. Terrific. He's he called it. Yeah, he's terrific finishing. That was a high arcing hook shot. I think Kevin Keats is going to give the Tigers a steady diet of pick and roll the last eight minutes. And you know, he is one of the best distributors in the history of this program. I mean, Chris Corciani is the, the bar, the standard up here, but he's not that far behind. Well, and what makes him so effective is he can shoot the ball. Funderburk the foul, sending Achua down to the floor. Let's watch now. You'll see pick and roll. Last year, he was scoring about 1.1 points of possession in pick and roll. Watch how high he goes off the glass. That's a, that's a, a learned skill. The little half hook over a shot blocker, not easy. When you combine his ability to look for his teammates and knock down the three ball, it's why I think he's potentially someday going to be an NBA backup point guard. He's got the speed shooting ability. He credits his mom, Sabrina, for it all. Hardworking lady. Has always supported Markel. And he has certainly been through his ups and downs yes. throughout the last four or five years. He is East Tech High School in Cleveland is the alma mater of a gentleman by the name of Jesse Owens, who uh, is probably one of the most iconic sports figures. Not probably, he is one of the most iconic sports figures of the 20th century. That, by the way, was the second foul on Funderburg. And so he has checked out of the game. Kevin Keats bringing Danny Dixon onto the floor. Beverly puts it up. And Achua with the rebound. Watch him bring it. Here he comes. From the weak side, Lance Thomas with two more. Energy. That's what Lance Thomas gives you. But you love the idea that a guy 6'9", like Precious, can rip and run off the glass and make plays 94 feet away. Markel Johnson, three more. Good sign. This is a good sign because Markel is starting to get back into his groove. Well, Wolfpack fans know what we're talking about. Ball, end to end, it rims out. Wolfpack with it. And good to see Jericho Helms back onto the floor. He gets tripped accidentally from behind. Achua picks up the personal foul. And our crew says happy Thanksgiving from Brooklyn. Happy Thanksgiving from ESPN. Eat Trade Halftime Report coming up. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, as we will take a look at a feast of upsets now that includes Michigan topping North Carolina. But, Robbie, in this game, both Memphis and NC State shooting over 55% in this first half. Pace is the name of the game. Who can handle the press better is going to determine this one. Markel Johnson for NC State getting it going. Feels like he's been in school for 10 years. Maybe <laughs> ironic coming from me. Uh, by the way, uh, no stops. Uh, defense optional early. Fran, the question for you is I had some prosciutto <laughs> over with Joe Tess earlier today at his house. What are you doing for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Brooklyn Bridge Marriott Buffet. <laughs> Brooklyn Bridge Marriott Buffet with my good buddy Doug Sherman and my wife Meg. And we want, to, Day. we want to say hello to Meg back at the hotel. She took a misstep down in Myrtle Beach last week and so she's a little bit hobbled. But she's watching the game. Absolutely. And uh, we have a lot to be thankful for being able to appreciate what we have. Friends, family, faith and basketball and Thanksgiving. No doubt about it. Helms from the corner, long rebound, and here come the Tigers once again. Lomax absorbs the contact, brings it out. Boogie Ellis back into the game, drive and dish to DJ Def Jeffries. Neither team has turned it over too much. Only seven combined turnovers so far. I like the way both teams are playing. They're, they're, they're running what they, they, their offensive execution has been really good. Achua going to have to shoot it. No problem. He'll like that. Not his strength, but uh, he'll take it. First three of the season for Precious Achua. One for three. Here is Markel Johnson. I like Robbie Hummel's line about uh, the irony of him saying Markel's been in college for several years. Former Purdue All-American back in the studio with us today. 
Devin Daniels fouled on his drive to the bucket. Well, this is the 21st annual Big Ten ACC Challenge, and Tuesday night, 9.30 Eastern, catch Cassius Winston and number three Michigan State hosting Trey Jones and number one Duke. And Wednesday night, also at 9.30 Eastern, it's number 10 Ohio State with Caleb Wesson taking on Cole Anthony and the North Carolina Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. Both games are on ESPN as well as the ESPN app as Devin Daniels comes up with his first point of the game. Some really good ACC point guards. Cole Anthony certainly been outstanding. There's five of the best. Brandon Childress should be on that list as well. Wake Forest, Brandon Childress having a really good year. But I think Markel Johnson, when healthy, to me, he is uh, right in that mix with Trey Jones. Of course, Kia Clark gives you the defense. And Trent Forrest, really one of the most underrated point guards in college basketball, has been for a couple of years now. I will be making my designated trip to Minneapolis, where I'm the uh, voice of the Gophers during the Big Ten ACC <laughs> Challenge. Richard Petino and I have got to know each other very well through the years. And as you're saying about Markel Johnson, based on what we've seen in the first 14 minutes here today, coming back from that ankle injury, I would say he's getting much closer to being whole and being legitimately one of the top three point guards in this league. I believe so. Yes, I believe so. Because the thing you love about him is he's a point guard that is a great distributor who can also score. Well, Farnham and I last December had his career high game in, against Auburn. He scored 27 points and really took over the second half. We've seen a flash of that here in the first half. Price dumps it off. Thomas with the block shot. Bodies on the floor. Ball coming this way. Markel Johnson couldn't save it, so it's Memphis basketball. Screened out by the official Clarence Armstrong right there. There's Kevin Keats, the 47-year-old native of Lynchburg, Virginia. Former standout at Heritage High School. Lomax waits for the screen. Dangerous pass, deflected, comes to Ellis. Now Precious Achua says, let's hold on. I'm going to go to work here. I'm 6'9". I'm 240. I'm going to cross you over and get to the rim. Just couldn't finish. Couldn't finish. Good effort. Good energy. Again, in the, in, in the NBA, he is not going to be a go-to scorer. He's going to play the energy athlete, rebound, defend, dunk, game. Ellis, wild shot, caught the bottom of the rim. Good ball movement to now find the open man for a good look. Daniels couldn't find the range though. Memphis with it on top by six. Lance Thomas giving Penny Hardaway really good minutes. You don't run any plays for this guy. He just defends, rebounds, and dunks. Great feed to Thomas, and he'll shoot too. And, and this kid Lomax. There were times last year where Alex Lomax as a freshman was a, the game was a little fast for him didn't have a great season but he was a freshman over the last couple games he's really starting to come into his own he understands how to run a team and uh, it just gives Penny Hardaway one more weapon this this team's going to go 10 deep by the time Canones and James Wiseman come back came back but I mentioned Lance Thomas at the very beginning, Doug. Right. Uh, I didn't know who he was at Louisville. And when I watched him in Atlantis, well, not at Atlantis, it was another hotel, but I'm not going to give them a plug right now. But there was no James Wiseman. He didn't play in August. This kid played. And uh, I fell in love with the fact that he's a high-energy guy and always talking on the defensive end. He'll go out after making the two free throws. And again, Malcolm Dandridge returns. He's the freshman from Memphis East, where the plan was that he was going to redshirt. But plans have changed, and so making his college debut here this afternoon. And, you know, he was a four-star, but only the sixth highest rated player in his own class. Great class. It, truly a great recruiting class. Johnson is fouled by Dandridge out front. Impossible 
to ask Dandridge to stay, try and stay in front of Johnson. You know, assistant coach Tony Madwat told me before the game, he really had some insight. I said, what about all these guys? How are you going to figure it out when, when Wiseman and Canonis come back? And he said, Penny told the guys before the season, as you see Tony, he said, the number by your name when you were recruited, that means nothing once you get to Memphis. You will earn playing time in practice every day. And, you know, not a lot of coaches could make that happen as well as I think a guy who's one of the great college players of all time can. Be honest. Ellis yeah. buries the corner triple. This is the largest lead of the ball game. Memphis has stretched it to 10. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in for Black Friday deals. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Hey, this is President Chua, and I just want to say happy things even to everyone. And I'm thankful for my family, thankful for being a part of the Memphis basketball team, and just thankful that I'm alive. Hi, Coach Penny Hardaway from the University of Memphis. I'm thankful for life itself because we only get one. Thankful for that, and I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Very well said, both by Precious and Penny. Doug Sherman along with Fran Fischel. And as we were talking about, we're very thankful to be here as well and thankful for family on this Thanksgiving day. Precious Achua putting on a show early. You say that, uh, you know, he's not going to be a go-to scorer in the NBA, but he can be that here, certainly in the yes. interim without James Wiseman. Without a question. 20 points, 10 rebounds in the three games without Wiseman. And at the college level, he's a beast. He's a tremendous athlete. The thing you love about him... And uh, we've said it many times, but this kid, you know, exemplifies it. Playing hard is a talent. And this kid gives you everything he's got every night, along with this elite athleticism. And believe it or not, that's a great combination to have when you're 6'9". Markel Johnson. Pelham's still can't find the range. Fran, if before this game I told you we would go almost eight minutes at one time without a turnover either way, would you have believed it? No, no, because both teams usually uh, bring the heat defensively, but I mentioned earlier, I think the execution's been pretty good. Both teams really have an idea of who their go-to guys are, and they share it, and this guy shares it. Boogie Ellis has been on fire. Five of seven shooting, and it continues. He's up to 17 points. This is the Boogie Ellis that they recruited, only averaging eight points a game, not shooting a high percentage. And this is exactly what Penny Hardaway was looking for from Boogie Ellis. Johnson has it knocked away, able to recover. Andre for three. First time we've called Pat Andre's name, the grad transfer out of Lehigh. Big time shooter. A lot better shooter than his dad, who was a <laughs> Notre Dame star for Digger Phelps, drafted by the Chicago Bulls. And one time senior vice president of the NBA. Watch Boogie Ellis now. He's given us a lot today, the shooting. But this is what he does best. He's on the attack. And a terrific finish at the rim. Young man from Mission Bay High School in San Diego. And uh, Penny Hardaway's got to love it. And there's Pat Andre knocking down the deep ball. He played for the Lehigh Engineers for three seasons before he uh, made the move to uh, Tobacco Road. And prior to that, he was a prolific high school scorer at Christian Brothers Academy down the shore in New Jersey, the all-time leading scorer in CBA history. So getting an opportunity as graduate transfer to play in the ACC. When I think of the ACC and NC State, I think of a kid who went to high school about a mile from here, played for the Wolfpack. He's no longer with us, Lorenzo Charles. Mm. And, of course, Lorenzo Charles will always be remembered in the ACC for the, the basket that beat the uh, that beat five Slamma Jamma back in 1983. Yeah, one of two national championships, one in the history of this decorated program from Raleigh. Helm still working. Saturday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Heisman hopeful. Joe Burrow and number two LSU look to stay perfect against Texas A&M in Death Valley. 
Fran, the last time those two teams played, the Aggies beat the Tigers 74, 72, and seven overtimes in College Station. I remember that. <laughs> they changed the, they changed the, the overtime rules after that game because uh, they worry about player safety. And by the way, you know where Joe Burrow is from? Uh, what town is he from? He's going to be the Heisman Trophy winner, no doubt. Uh, he's Burrow. a Midwestern guy. Joe Burrow is from Athens, Ohio. Oh, and we okay. just spent uh, time in Myrtle Beach with the Ohio U Bobcats, and there are a lot of Bobcat fans down there wearing LSU gear. I get it. Because Joe Joe Burrow's dad was a defensive coordinator for Frank Solich for many many years. Yep, and I'll tell you, I, I don't see why. I know Chase Young is quote the best player in the country. Joe Burrow is it's one it's one in one a. Yep. That kid is amazing. Harris rattles home the three. And that's what that kid does. Tyler Harris, smallest guy on the floor, but a mighty might, big time shooter. Second made three so far today. Johnson misses on the spin. Tyler Harris was calling for the ball, didn't get it. With a minute 30 remaining in the half, I think Penny Hardaway said slow it down. And so that's exactly what Damian Baugh has done. Here goes Ball. Got a step on the defender, and he lays it in. Nicely done. Carving up that pack defense right now. That was terrific basketball by Paul Ball because he came off the screen and he stopped. He stopped and waited to see what he had, and then he exploded to the rim. Slower, better in pick and roll if you're a point guard. Andre. Well, outside of Markel Johnson and D.J. Funderburg, NC State has struggled to find offense this afternoon. Let's see, let's see if the NBA player goes two for one right here. And he's, they're trying. All right. A little too late. They had the right idea. He's going up. Going to let Harris go one on one. He goes right around Andre, and he lays it in. Impressive. They recognized what they had and attacked. Absolutely. Saw the mismatch. That's the 10th team foul after personal number two on ball. Watch Harris. He sees the mismatch. Nobody comes and helps, and the little guy gets right to the basket. One of those guys that didn't make a college decision until after Penny Hardaway was named the coach at Memphis, and... Uh, Young young guy from his hometown decided to stay home. Played a lot last year. His team is deeper this year, but he still has an important role off the bench. Right, and he, he as much as anybody on this young team, as a sophomore with experience, provides leadership that when you've got a group like this is a very big deal. Made the most threes as a Tiger freshman in history last year. Knocked down 79. Shot clock, game clock, just about even. Love Penny coaching. We can hear the whole conversation from across the court. Absolutely. That's why I stopped talking to listen to what he had to say. That's excellent. Excellent execution. Tremendous first half by the Tigers. The Lomax bucket gives Memphis a 55-39 lead heading into the break. Boogie Ellis has doubled his season average with 17 points, and Memphis ends the half on a 19-7 run. When we return, John Brickley, Robbie Hummel, Sean Farnham will be by with the E-Trade halftime report right after these messages. You're watching the E-Trade Halftime Report. Memphis's offense led by one individual in the first half against NC State. That would be Boogie Ellis. 17 points, including a pair of threes. Memphis right now with the lead. This halftime report is presented by E-Trade. Get $100 on us when you deposit $5,000. Visit E-Trade.com. Welcome back to Barclays Center Classic, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. We're here in New York City on the Thanksgiving holiday, and so glad you could be with us. Memphis 55, NC State 39 as we head toward the second half. With Fran Priscilla, I'm Doug Sherman. They put 55 on the board pretty easily, Fran. Three turnovers. Uh, 
I don't think I need this. Uh, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Uh, three turnovers, great execution. That's been the most impressive thing. The ball moved well, not a lot of mistakes, and this is a team, NC State, that usually plays good pressure defense. Boogie Ellis was the man offensively. He's already doubled his season average going for 17 points. Yeah, this is what they expected when they recruited Boogie Ellis. I wouldn't say he was in a shooting slump. It's just that with a plethora of scores, he wasn't had, had the opportunity to carry the team. Now without Wiseman and Quinones for at least a month, maybe a little bit longer, we're seeing the real Boogie Ellis. Very impressive. Great in the open court, knocking down shots and uh, instant offense to this point. Our first half stats brought to you by the Basketball Hall of Fame. And no surprise, Memphis is doing it from either right at the rim or out on the perimeter. Six for seven on three-point shots. No mid-range shots, the rest of them in the paint. Well, you think that an NBA guy who understands analytics like Penny Hardaway would uh, take those lessons, bring them to college? He has. and. Uh, Listen, they're tough in the paint because they get in there, uh, but they also can shoot the ball. When you talk about Ellis and little uh, Tyler Harris as well. Memphis with the basketball to begin the second half here at Barclays Center. And here is Boogie Ellis. DJ Jeffries had a quiet first half. Ellis certainly did not. Bates got a piece of it. Ball comes to Jeffries, and then he throws it away. Our first turnover in a long while. Not offensive a, foul. Not a good decision by Markel Johnson. Two on one break. You must make the defender commit to you before you give it up. And that time, the defender was able to play both Wolfpack players. I'm surprised he made that decision as good a passer as he is. It's the old story. You go to the rim looking to score until the defense cuts you off. That did not happen. So we go the last 11 minutes of the first half without a turnover. Then we have two within a matter of seconds. Yep, and that's what's going to have to happen for NC State. Their pick and roll defense has to get a lot better as well the second half. Bryce also quiet in that first half. Got it up on the rim. Bates with the second effort banks it home. Now let's see if the Tigers don't squander prosperity because they were so good for 20 minutes and you know NC State's going to come out with a revved enthusiasm. Couldn't stop Ball from getting to the rim again. He's got six. Long term Damian Ball is going to be a very good college player. Foul on the drive. There is Ball the 6 3 freshman from Nashville. He picks up his third personal. And so he'll take a seat. Coming back in, Alex Lomax. That's why we didn't see Damian Ball much, much of that first half. But luckily for Penny Hardaway, Lomax is a guy that is a no-mistake point guard. This time calling his own number. Looked like Johnson tried to throw it down. He's only 6'1", but a tremendous athlete. Maurice playing a little high low Achua goes and gets it gets it again That's and then does. finally on third effort Fran able to make the bucket he's just trying to pad his rebound stats but he's so quick off the glass and you have to account for him on every shot well, you said on a bad night he can go for 18 and 10 he's on his way for that again yeah Bryce He's not shooting as many threes this year as he did last year and off the mark on that one. You know what I love about that last possession on the Tigers offensive end? Penny Hardaway said, I'm going to get my big guy a touch and we're going to get it into him. And uh, Precious is also really good on the perimeter. He, they can isolate him as well. Jeffries has his first points of the ball game. It's another guy with loads of talent who was quiet in the first half. E.J. Jeffries reminds me a little bit of P.J. Washington who played at Kentucky. Timeout NC State after the made three-pointer by Markel Johnson. Give him 16 as the Wolfpack try to hang in there with the Tigers.
Precious Achua is a New York native from Queens back home this Thanksgiving holiday and looking very good doing it. Does it with energy, plays hard, very engaged on both ends of the floor and uh, gets it done with just toughness, grit, and a whole lot of athleticism. Quick jumper, great, great offensive rebounder, maybe the best offensive rebounder I've seen this year. Mark Vidal from Baylor would be in that mix as well. But look at, look at the family names, pretty cool. We remember God's gift at St. John's. He played for Steve Lavin, and there you see God's gift. He played around, you know, I think around 13 and 14 and 15. And their parents are Pentecostal ministers and came up with those unique names, which actually seem a little more appropriate on Thanksgiving Day as we think about family. Traveling violation. Memphis gives it back to North Carolina State. Bryce under control, missed the shot. There's another rebound for Achua. That is his ninth. He's got position inside, calling for the ball. Lomax doesn't find him. Maurice left wide open, got to shoot that. And it goes out of bounds untouched. Funderburg back in for North Carolina State. <laughs> Ellis pokes it away from Beverly. Good pressure. Ellis locked in right now. And the foul is called. And Ellis immediately looks over to his coach, Penny Hardaway, who explains what just happened. Yes, and when you pressure as good as Ellis did, you got to, you got to, then you got to back off for a split second, then get back on because defense, the referee is watching that. Misfire by Hellams. Yeah, can't buy a bucket right now. Ellis drives. Sweet. And bangs it in. Yep, open court, score. Tell you, he has a lot of Lou Williams in him, the NBA perennial sixth man of the year, it seems like. Johnson, high rebound, pulled down by the only senior on this Memphis roster, Maurice. Maurice has the pass deflect back to him off his hand and out of bounds. And so the Wolfpack will have it when we return to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in for Black Friday deals. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. For the game, Fran Fraschilla and I had a chance to ask Coach Keats what he was most thankful for, and he said family, both his own family and his basketball family. And he went on to say, with everything that's going on in the world these days, he's just trying to keep on making a difference for those who are in his family. No question. These young men trying to get them to grow up both on and off the court. And Kevin Keats, a great mentor. Funderburg back into the game. Boogie Ellis anticipating the handoff gets right in there and steals it away. Terrific energy, man. Boogie Ellis, he is, uh, this is a coming out party for the terrific young freshman out of San Diego. Not only on the offensive end, but he's been fairly locked in defensively today. Young man who committed to Duke and decided to change his mind when he realized Trey Jones was coming back to school. 
And you mentioned it in the first half. And, and obviously, Penny Hardaway had an unbelievable NBA career. These guys all know who he is. Many of them are from Memphis, grew up understanding what type of personality he was. But, but Penny's one of 24 former NBA players who are currently head coaches in Division I college basketball. Rice knocks it out of bounds. And on his staff, you've got Mike Miller, who, of course, had a longtime NBA career, former teammate of Penny's in Orlando. NBA Rookie of the Year in 2001, former Florida Gator who... I think he played 17 seasons, a couple NBA titles with the Cavaliers. And uh, it's great to have that kind of weaponry on your bench because these kids, let's face it, if you're a top recruit, top 10, top 15, you want to play in the NBA, you want to be tutored the right way. Markel Johnson. And uh, I mentioned the Cavaliers, actually the Heat, although he played for the Cleveland Cavaliers with LeBron. LeBron. But he was part of those heat championships. So then, Fran, why for Penny Hardaway and for Mike and for Patrick Ewing and for Dan Marley, Jawan Howard, Jerry Stackhouse, Bobby Hurley, Aaron McKee, Danny Manning, Tony Bennett, on and on, why do those guys who played in the NBA, Season. many of them for many, many years, made a lot of money, why do they want to get into this part of the industry? Because coaching Division I college basketball, as you know, is not a walk in the park. It's not easy. Well, I would say this. As someone who's been coaching, broadcasting, part of this game, it's uh, it's why why because they love basketball. They've grown, all these guys have grown up around the game first as players and then maybe broadcasters, coaches, assistant coaches in the NBA, and I think it's great. And you look at some of the guys. I, I laugh about the idea. Let me just take uh, Jerry Stackhouse for a second, okay? And this this qual Patrick Ewing falls into this category. If you played and coached in the NBA for 20 years, that means that you've been a part of 100 games a year, 200 possessions a game, playing for the best coaches in the world. Pat Riley and, you know, all those great coaches, Eric Spolster, so many others. These guys know the game. They know it. I mean, the, the, the coaching in the NBA is greater and harder and more difficult than coaching in college. So the adjustment to college is, can I recruit players? Penny can do that. But as far as basketball IQ, based on what I've seen over the last year and a half, and especially from guys like Patrick Ewing, what Jerry Stackhouse did in the G League. These guys know the game and they want to be around the game. And it's not just their bank account, it's making a difference. I, I think it's great. And Fran, you mentioned one of the biggest differences, if not the biggest difference, between coaching in the NBA and in college is recruiting. And not everybody has the chops for it. But a guy like Penny certainly, A, seems to. And the fact that he was a highly successful high school coach winning three straight state championships, and also with his AAU team, he seems like the perfect combination of all of those things. <laughs> NC State's defense forces the shot clock violation. That's how they're going to try and climb back in this thing for Coach Keats. And I think there's one other ingredient with Penny particularly, and that is the, the city of Memphis has great high school basketball. Has for many years, and... It's one of those places where more often than not the great players from Memphis will stay home and who better to stay home and play for than a guy who's arguably the greatest player to ever play there who's now developing into a really good coach. I think Penny Hardaway can coach in the NBA. I, I really do. I think he's got the, uh, the, the type of calmness, the, the type of gravitas to coach the best players in the world because it's a player's league. The best players in the NBA are business partners with the owners, and Penny understands that because he was one of those business partners. Right. NC State down 15 with a basketball. Markel Johnson's been their lead scorer today. Great move around Achua for two more. Let's see if they can turn the heat up now because remember, NC State is known for pressure defense. Last year, they pressed on 31% of their possessions. And Lomax calls timeout. We'll step away with the Wolfpack riding a 6-0 run, trying to climb back in this thing here in Brooklyn. Doug Sherman, Fran Fraschilla back here in Brooklyn, and uh, no one is more Memphis than that guy. Penny Hardaway grew up there two-time All-American at the university and then has gone back 
has a home in Florida as well, but has once again made his home in Memphis and, and making a lot of difference for a lot of people. And, you know, great 30 for 30 a few years ago. His good friend Desmond Merriweather was the middle school coach. Uh, Penny was his assistant. Desmond sadly passed away at 41 as the coach at East High School. Penny took over for Desmond, and uh, he's got his calling. I don't know if he's going to be at Memphis for 20 years or not, but I know right now he's done a terrific job with this young group, and you got to be excited. I do think he can coach in the NBA, but, you know, it's a different it's a different sport, completely different sport. The only thing that's similar is the round ball, and maybe he makes a bigger difference with teenagers and potential NBA players at Memphis. But right now, I like the NC State energy. They've come out here and... Uh, Trying to make this a game. Fran, it's an 8-0 run. And they've been turning Memphis over here in the second half, and that's helped to get them going. That is now seven Tigers turnovers since the intermission. And the Tigers were nearly flaw flawless in the first half. 55 points and three turnovers. And They, sh they and shot well over 60% in that first half as well. Yeah, but I love the way Markel Johnson's starting to come back. Ankle injury early in the year. That was the main reason they lost to Georgia Tech to start the year. Whistle off the ball. It's going to go against Lance Thomas. That is his third. And now Precious Achua back in, also back off the bench. Malcolm Dandridge. And when you look at NC State compared to Memphis, and we praise Memphis, the one thing you notice about NC State, that's an old group out there. You've got a couple of fifth-year guys, a fourth-year senior, Thunderberg, also a JUCO transfer, uh, formerly at Ohio State. Fight for the basketball. Hellman's in a heck of a spot. On a held ball, it'll go the other way. It's our 6 p.m. Eastern Thanksgiving edition of SportsCenter with Tony Collins and Zubin Mahenti. Now look at the revenge factor for Drew Brees and the Saints tonight against the Falcons. Plus North Carolina Michigan post game in the battle for Atlantis semis today won by the Wolverines. And Saturday's guide to an upset Michigan over Ohio State in the game. Auburn over Alabama in the Iron Bowl. Oklahoma State over Oklahoma in Bedlam. Fran give thanks for SportsCenter 6 p.m. Eastern as well. ESPN and the ESPN app. Fun weekend, no question. Great football on Saturday, obviously. Kicked off by the Buckeyes and the Wolverines. And I think we got the Egg Bowl tonight on ESPN and Mississippi, Mississippi State. A lot of Ole Miss fans staying at our hotel. They were happy with the great comeback last night by Kermit Davis's team. How about that? Down 21 to Penn State in the second half. And then uh, the Oklahoma State fans have made the trip from Stillwater also thinking about their big college football game coming up this weekend against rival Oklahoma. But not before they take on uh, Ole Miss in the championship game of the preseason NIT. Doug will eat, we'll be eating turkey leftovers tomorrow. Johnson draws a crowd, gives it off to Thunderbird, and now gets it back. Long range three. Achua holding on to Thunderbird. And uh, we used to have a foul called a hook and hold, and that could have been that, but Curtis, uh, Clarence Armstrong, I think they're going to look at it, yeah. Yeah, Clarence initially said he was holding on to the shorts of his opponent, but I thought the same as you, Frank. Yeah, I think they got to check that. I, gotta, I think they got to take a peek at that. They've got a common foul, uh, but they can review this. And remember, this year, new NCAA rule. They can add fouls or remove fouls from either player, depending on what they see on the monitor. In the past, if they called a foul on a player who was hook and held, you could not remove that foul. This year you can. Let's take a peek now. Watch right arm of, of Precious Achua. I think that could be a flagrant one right there. That could be a hook and hold. Yeah, so do I. And on the two angles we've seen on the replays, I'm not sure it's been conclusive, but I think the same as you and I didn't see what Clarence initially indicated a grab of the shorts. I thought it was yeah more likely to be a hook and hold but uh, those two replays they've got more replays than we've seen and, and been able to show you so maybe they're getting a better look. Yeah Don Daly went to the monitor right away and that's what uh, he and Clarence Armstrong are doing right now. 
And what they want to do is, and it, it's it's been cleaned up, they want that play out of the game where a, a, a player hooks another player and it's, it's cause for injury, shoulder injuries. Let's see. Okay, it's going to be a common foul. All good. So yep. no, no definitive look. Like it. But you're right. Since they, you know, the NCAA added that rule added it we don't see it anymore much, so yeah. so with the flop rule coming in we've got the one flop warning already in this game the next one will be a technical do you think that we're going to have the same effect i hope so as the season goes on and in years forward i think the flop rule has been a little unevenly adjudicated to this point but uh, i get the intent of the rule and hopefully it will clean things up you just can't have a flop and a charge on one play can't have a defense flopping and then you call a charge in the offense. That makes no sense to me, but they'll get it right. These officials are asked to be perfect on day one and improve from there. Tyler Harris yep. for three. He is uh, dangerous. Third down back, Darren Sproles. 11 points off the bench for number one for the Tigers. The lead stretches back to 15. Every now and then, Tyler Harris will fumble, and every now and then he'll run, a, <laughs> run it back for 90 yards. But more often than not, it gives you instant offense. Now he's got three touchdowns, if you will, today. A perfect <laughs> three for three. Hellums answers with a triple at the other end. Well, Hellums can fill it up. He's averaging just a touch under 10 per game, but out of Chaminade High School in St. Louis, You've got Bradley Beal, number one, yeah. Jason Tatum, number two, and Helms is number three on the all-time scoring list. Well, he didn't get that many shots with Tatum. No, had to play a couple of years with Tatum. Yeah. Daniels off the steal, lays it in, and the Wolfpack still chipping away. Here they come. And again, veteran team. How, this, how does this young Tiger team react to the big lead? We saw it happen. Look at this. The turnovers continue to mount here in the second half for Memphis. We saw this last night, Doug. But that was a veteran Penn State team that gave away a 21-point lead. Nine turnovers in the first 11 minutes of this half. Boogie Ellis and Alex Lomax will come back into the game at the next stoppage, which is now Thunderbird has a chance for three. Well, Malcolm Dandridge get, getting his first uh, action. Take a look at the steal by Devin Daniels, the Utah transfer, who is having a very good senior year. And then big fell inside, DJ Funderburg going to work against a freshman. Malcolm Dandridge making his college debut today. And all of a sudden, the veterans are having their way with the young guys. And you know, Coach Keats doesn't have a deep bench, but he's got a productive bench. Those two guys can go double figures any game, any time. Oh, they're getting 30 points off that bench, to your point. Helms has 13, Funderburg 10 so far. And there you see the latest run for the Wolfpack, back within seven. Lomax to the corner. Another open look for the senior. This time, Isaiah Maurice has the ring. That was big. That was a uh, momentum changer, at least for a possession. Get it back up to double figures. Psychologically, that's a big basket. Underberg calling for the ball. He gets it on the bounce. Faces up. Spins back to the baseline and earns a trip to the line. That's a good example of slow is better. Thunderbird slowed down that move, little head fake. Got the experienced Isaiah Maurice up in the air, and he'll shoot two free throws. Cleveland, Ohio connection with Markel Johnson and uh, DJ Thunderbird. Thunderbird was. Part of the problem at the start of the year for Kevin Keats just not having a full complement. He's not going to have a full complement of players on scholarship this year anyhow, but Funderburk was suspended for the first couple of games of the year. They are certainly glad to have his 11 and a half points coming off the bench now. Yeah. And uh, kudos to Kevin Keats, top 10 recruiting class for those five recruits from the state of North Carolina. They're really excited about the development of this, this team and where they're going in the future. Achua with a head of steam is fouled. Would you take a charge on that man? 
No. <laughs> Unless you paid me a lot of money. <laughs> Back or, to Brooklyn. Or a turkey dinner. Let's do that. Studio update, battle for Atlanta semifinals on ESPN. Sean Gonzaga and Oregon right now in a track meet. Killian Tilly helping yeah. the cause for the Zags. After a night of load management, he got to rest. <laughs> He's looking well rested and ready to go for Gonzaga. Good one, guys. Under four on ESPN. Thank you, Brick. Here is the bracket for the battle for Atlantis. And Michigan awaits the winner of the Zags and the Ducks. Yeah, Mark Few, a Oregon grad, grew up. 13 miles north of Eugene in Cresswell, Oregon. Now, that woman's had turkey dinner already. <laughs> a little trip to fan. A little drowsy here. Well, again, that's why you and I, Fran, strategically chose not to participate in that <laughs> yeah, early group meal that the, the crew had across the street. Great meal, they all said, but uh, we didn't want to get drowsy like some of the folks <laughs> who are here. <laughs> It's that kind of day, and we appreciate you joining us here on Thanksgiving, flipping away from football for a while to check out some college hoops here in Brooklyn. Mike, Mike Boynton, Jr., the coach at o o Oklahoma State, had a great line yesterday. He grew up 15 minutes from here. I grew up about 25 minutes from here, and he said, if you would have told me there was an NBA franchise and an NBA arena in downtown Brooklyn, mm -hmm. he said, I can't even, couldn't even dream it. It's hard to imagine, but... Home of the Nets, and now great college basketball this weekend. Marco Johnson, Funderburg. Pretty Long good. two. Yep. Good patience by Markel. Excellent in pick and roll. He took what the defense gave him, and they gave them that open three to Funderburg. Give him 14 points, Fran. 72-65. Yeah, the problem right now for, for Memphis is Achua gets to the line a lot, eight times a game, but not a great free throw shooter. Boogie Ellis will shoot some. And he went down hard after taking it across the arm. And he will shoot a pair of free throws. 3rd on Funderburg. Well, for many of these players and coaches, this is an opportunity to come on the uh, holiday week and come to New York City and to Brooklyn and, and have some fun. And Kevin Keats... Wife Georgette has come along on the trip with uh, their two sons and Georgette did some damage shopping we were told which you'd understand saw a Broadway show last night dear Evan Hansen and then uh, got up early this morning and went back into Manhattan to see the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade now our younger son Caden got up and made the trip but uh, the older brother who's a teenager you understand KJ slept he, in and he missed slept the parade in, of course I get it I used to have two teenagers that's all they did. This is a good test for Memphis. I, I think NC State's going to be in the top half of the ACC. And uh, without Wiseman, without Canones today, playing a veteran team like this, this gives Penny Hardaway's club a chance to grow up. And Wolfpack still battling. Underberg's been leading the way with the last seven points, although he's on the bench at the moment. Beverly looking for his first points here today. Now he, he's going to shoot 80% of his shots behind the arc. And all of a sudden now, NC State creeping back in it. Tigers have been poised. I like their, I like their composure. But they still have to make baskets. Achua rising up. Not the shot they're looking for there. That's his four. That's the four three of the year. He's one for four. He's shooting 25 percent. Not his strength. Probably not. He is great going to the basket. In fact, in a lot of games this year, they've isolated him in open space to give him a chance to drive. But he's not a great foul shooter. Beverly, and he'll go to the line. Foul down the way up. Now, if you're looking for points, Beverly can certainly deliver. Once scored 70 in a high school game. His career uh, at Hazard High School, 2,558 uh, 2, points. Not as many as Joe Girard's from Syracuse, no. but still pretty good uh, numbers. This young man originally committed and actually attended Ohio State, and then Thad Mata left. 
New coach came in, Chris Holdman, Ohio State, allowed him to leave, and he's been very productive for Kevin Keats. First uh, two and a half seasons, and here come the pack. Achua this time doesn't look at the rim, hands it off to Jeffries. Shot clock at 10. Lomax left his feet, had nowhere to go, and he turns it back over to NC State. I thought Lomax should have put that ball on the rim. It was going to likely get blocked, but he held on to it and came down with it. Right. If yeah. he releases it, something good could yeah, happen. If you yeah. come down with it, you know nothing good can exactly. happen. Exactly. I mean, he got to the rim. He gets there with power. Just got to get that ball in the glass. Let your big guys go to work. It's one thing Precious Achua does well. Huge play right here for NC State. Mid-range shot. Helms no. Memphis secures it. I would have shot the three ball if I were Jericho Helms, Helms there. They got him off his feet into the long mid range, and it would have been a long two. Penny Hardaway orchestrating this offense from the sideline. Downhill. Achua tried to spin through a double team, had it knocked away. And on the held ball, the possession arrow favors North Carolina State. The largest lead of the game, Fran, was 20 at 61 to 41, three minutes into the second half. They can cut it down to a one possession game here. 55 points in the first half, was yep, it? That's what it was. 19 points in the first 15 minutes of the second half. So good job by the Wolfpack, tightening the screws. And this guy's key because he's a maestro with the ball. Off the crossover and the reverse, it trickles off the rim. Bouncing around, Memphis comes up with it. Jeffries nearly turned it over. Instead, he puts up a 13-footer. Headed over the back foul. Lance Thomas, the guilty party. Well, Memphis's best offense right now might be just to shoot that ball and let the big guys go get it. And DJ Jeffries had an opportunity to stretch that lead. He has not had a good game today. I was expecting more out of the young man from Olive Branch, Mississippi. He doesn't seem engaged today in the offense. Only three attempts. Just a couple of points. Came in averaging 14 a game. Jericho Hellams rattles home his first free throw. And uh, so Jeffries will head out. Tyler Harris comes back in. Also, Alex Lomax takes a seat. And it looks like Thomas will be replaced. You know, it's crazy. It's a three. It's a, it's a four point game. It may be three right here. I, I feel like the air's coming out of, of Memphis. I, I feel like if you made me decide right now who's going to win this game, it's going to be NC State. All the momentum's on their side, and Memphis suddenly has nowhere to go to get a basket, which is crazy considering how good they were the first 20 minutes. But young team, how do they respond in a close game? Harris, Baugh, lost it, got it back, missed. Achua doing what he does, crashing the glass, and he'll shoot two. And that might be their best offense right there. Get to the rim, whether it's Harris, Ellis, Damian Baugh, and this guy going to the line is a warrior. Fourth foul on Manny Bates. Key now for Precious Achua, Doug, is to make his free throws because he gets there a lot. And he's only about 50-50. And it's tougher in a spot like this, I would imagine, as he has seen his team's 20-point lead dwindled to three. If you're Kevin Keats in the back of your head, you almost have to think about later in the game fouling this guy on purpose if you need to and you're down. Just file that away for the last minute or two.
Markel Johnson, cool, calm, and collected. Rice draws contact and a trip to the line. It's a veteran team, DJ Thunderbird from the long range, and then Braxton Beverly from longer range. Here they come. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Basketball Hall of Fame, where the game never ends. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. With Fran Fraschilla, I'm Doug Sherman. Have a little fun during this timeout because the game's gotten good, Fran. Terrific comeback by NC State. Uh, quietly, I would say. It's not anything that uh, Memphis has turned it over more in the second half than they did in the first half. They have eight turnovers, but NC State almost like... Uh, it's been drip, 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 and all of a sudden, 20 is down to uh, a very manageable four points. Well, they defended so much better this half. Not only the turnovers, they have cut Memphis's shooting percentage in half from 63 in the first half down to 32% here in the second. And so the PA announcer is letting the folks know that uh, the officials during that timeout went back and looked at a shot that was indeed called a two-pointer and was a two-point shot. And so no change in the score with C.J. Bryce at the free throw line. Out of North Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte, he gets one out of two. High school teammate of Davion Mintz, the point guard at Creighton. Had a very good high school team. This is an opportunity for growth for, for, for Memphis. Young team, neutral site against an NCAA opponent. And a poor decision that time by Lomax. Ninth turnover. Beverly. Boogie Ellis. Nah, it's too hard to pass. Could have easily lost that. Nice job by Lomax, and now he gets it back. And he's calm, cool, collected on that sideline. He's orchestrating this offense. It's probably going to be a chew up, pick and roll, pop, give him an ISO. Foul. But if you're NC State, that's not so bad. No, it's not because the numbers say 50 50. Last 13 minutes, Penny Hardaway's team has made just two field goals. <laughs> But he's been pretty good as far as cheerleading his guys and trying to orchestrate offense. And now it's a matter of these young guys growing up. This is going to happen to this team about 10 more times during the season where they're going to be in a three possession game in the final four minutes. And certainly by mid January they'll have the full complement of great players in this lineup. Off the non shooting foul inbound comes to Achua. Watch him go now. Achua. Yep. It's exactly what he did against Memphis. Gave Achua a chance to isolate on that right wing. He's a great driver. That time he pulled up and pretty good execution. 15 points, 11 rebounds for the freshman out of St. Benedict's in New Jersey. Markel Johnson. Big stop for Memphis. Same thing now. Get it over half court. Get it into your run some clock. And see if you can isolate a chewer again. Harrison Lomax in the backcourt. Bring him up. There you go. Lomax. Step back. No. Jeffries. Yes. That's where DJ Jeffries has been hanging out. Timely, quick jumper. If you're Memphis, no three ball. Bryce for two. He's got it. Timeout, North Carolina State. And we'll take a break with him. Back to Brooklyn in 30 seconds.
Doug Sherman, Fran Fraschilla back in Brooklyn going down to the wire between the Wolfpack and Tigers. First possession, little ISO. They gave Precious a true room. He shoots it. Watch uh, DJ Jeffries on the glass. Jumps the highest, jumps quickest, puts it in. They've got a lead. They're up five, and now they're going to get pressed. And now they're going to have to take care of the ball, this young team, make their free throws. Brand, those were a couple of big answers. They had gone a long stretch with only one field goal. Then they get two in succession and get the ball back. Remember, NC State can put the heat on you. Harris keeps it, dribbles away from trouble, leaves his feet, puts it up. No. Oh, man. And Johnson couldn't corral it. Fortunate. Tyler Harris was stuck between shooting it and lobbing it. He had uh, he had a chew on the baseline, just missed it. He'll make that shot probably seven out of ten times, but clock is your friend right now if you're the Tigers. And you see they've taken a chew out and brought Ellis back in. Now that, we've got some blood on the right arm of Jericho Hellams. And remember, Achua out because of the free throw shooting. And they all, that also gives the Tigers an extra ball handler. Four guard lineup right now. Lomax will trigger it. Damian Baugh, kick to the corner. Great defense by the Wolfpack. Helms, two on one. That should be a flop. Called as a blocking foul against Boogie Ellis. I don't think it was contact, but that's a flop. If th that is the definition of a flop. Take a look now. No doubt. I think he misses him. I mean, there's a little bit of contact there. And that's where I'm confused about the rule. This is why I don't like the rule, the flop rule. And we've already had the one flop warning called. That would have been number two. Yeah. It would have been one free throw. As it is, it's the fourth foul on Ellis. I'll be honest. There was a little contact before the flop rule that would not have been called no. an, a, a blocking foul. But be, because now, I, and I, I don't blame the officials. Quietly, I've talked to enough officials who are saying, look, we're just doing what we're told. One possession game. Young Tigers have to take care of the ball. A chew is in, so he's a guy you want to foul. You might want to foul him earlier than later. I think I'd foul him now. I really would. Extend the game. Instead, the Wolfpack playing it out. Looking for a stop. Foul. Harris will have a chance for three. Sweet move by Tyler Harris. Markell was pressuring up 25, 30 feet away. And Tyler Harris, who scored a bunch of points. Watch him get hit on the hand right there. He scored a bunch of point points at Cordova High School. And he knows how to do that. Fran, we talked about it in the first half. And you've talked about it as the 20-point lead has disappeared. How are they going to handle it? Well, their leader, their sophomore leader, handled it very well right there. Absolutely. They're, all they want to do is get on that charter back to Memphis with a win. They'll watch the tape, make corrections, but it's been a game effort by this young team. Now the Wolfpack really up against it. Johnson dribbled it off his foot. Lomax has it. Whistle comes. Timeout, Memphis. Excellent. I think it was Damian Ball that got the signal. Screaming for a timeout. Great effort by Lomax. Great teamwork by Ball. Clarence Armstrong, the official, was watching, making sure that Memphis had possession first before he awarded a timeout. Fran, let's go back to Brick in the studio. Doug, thank you very much. What a game we've had. The battle for Atlanta semifinals. Gonzaga, Oregon tied at 66. Robbie, 
Kelly and Tilly a chance to win it for the Zags. Well, why are you so far out? You're 3 of 11 from the field. I think Gonzaga could have gotten a better look than that. I know the time was running down. Yeah, well, in overtime, if you don't know, you should know. Peyton Pritchard's one of the best guards in the entire country. We got a good one. Tied at 70 guys in overtime on ESPN. Thank you, guys. Let's show you some of the hustle as Memphis and Penny Hardaway's team try to hang on to what was a big lead. Watch Alex Glomax. He's first to the floor. Now he's got to come up with the ball, and you see Damian Ball right there saying timeout. And again, good piece of officiating because you have to have possession before you award the timeout. Big play in this game. Really love the hustle of Lomax and Ball teaming up. And North Carolina State has done such a good job taking care of the basketball in the second half. It's unfortunate for Markel Johnson that he turned it over there, just their third turnover this second half. But it allows Memphis to hold on to a six-point lead when you and I felt two minutes ago it was going to completely slip away. Now they got a chance to hang on and win this thing. No question. Now they got to get it in cleanly. They're going to get fouled. Penny Hardaway going with small, small guards, four quick guys. Ellis, Harris, Lomax, Baugh, and DJ Jeffries, the five on the floor. Funderburg, Kellums, Johnson, Beverly, and Bryce out there for the Wolfpack. It's Lomax with Gotta the shot him. clock off. Got to stop the clock. And they give it up. Allowing about four seconds to run off the clock. The personal given by the fifth-year senior, C.J. Bryce. You know, Memphis was so good in the first half. It's hard to imagine they could have played any better, and they did give away this lead. But I love the idea they never cracked. There's their 48 year old head coach Penny Hardaway perhaps able to take a deep breath. One out of two from the line for Lomax probably need a three here. Got to go quicker than this. Achua blocks the shot. Ten seconds to go. Thunderbird commits the foul, and that should do it. I was thinking in the last few seconds, they're doing this without the number one or number two pick in the NBA draft. James Wiseman watching at home. Lester Canones on that bench with the uh, the broken right hand. And, and the poise against a quality team. This team has shown for basically 40 minutes. Wasn't perfect for a lot of the second half, Doug. But when you add... A young David Robinson to this group. It's going to be a pretty good team come mid January. Damian Baugh at the line. Final five seconds. Markel Johnson lays it in. He's had a big game. 22 points to lead the Wolfpack. And they call timeout. Watch the coaching going on right here. And the enthusiasm. Good job, young man, is what Penny Hardaway is saying. And our player of the game. Brought to you by the Air Force Reserves. No surprise, another double-double for the young man from Queens, New York, in his homecoming game. Well, Tony Madlock, assistant coach at Memphis and former teammate of Penny Hardaway's, said even when he plays poorly, he's going to get you a double-double. And I don't think he necessarily played poorly today, but the energy this kid gives off is uh, palpable on the court over 40 minutes. Fran, in the American Athletic Conference, where do you see Memphis fitting in right now? Top three. I mean, Houston, Kelvin Sampson's got a tremendous team. I really like them. I know UConn's on the rise, certainly. Watch out for SMU. They got Kendrick Davis back, and that's a sneaky good team. A lot of good teams in that league. UCF rebuilding a little bit, but uh, this Memphis, Cincinnati, of course, new coach John Brandon. 
I think Memphis has the most talent of any team in the league. It's just really hard, as we've seen, to win with young players. But I will say this. I said it in August when I watched them in the Bahamas. They like each other, and they play really hard. And that's two good ingredients when you have all that great talent. And with that inbound, that talent is now 6-1 and one on the year. Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers see a 20-point lead almost nearly disappear, but they hang on to win it 83-78. We'll have more from the Barkley Center in a few minutes, but for now, let's send you to John Brickley in the studio. Doug, thank you very much. College Basketball Live scoreboard. John Brickley alongside Sean Farnham.